Robert Walker came in 13th in the country in rushing, a sophomore out of Huntington, West Virginia, and there's his numbers on the season, a new West Virginia rushing record. And he has got 23 runs of 10 to 20 yards. That 16-yarder a little while ago. In the last six games, just keeps rolling along. Almost seven per carry and not hurting that average today. 11 carries so far for 57 yards for Walker. Second and a long five. He'll get the call again. This time only about three. Brian Howlett, who went out shaken up earlier in the ball game, makes a stop. You can see the Boston College defense evolving to try to stop the run. They've had some success, so that time Steve Zabel calls a run blitz. Stephen Boyd, number 15, hits the play and tries to take the pullback out in the backfield, and Hollett really scrapes over and makes them tip tackle in for a little bit of a gain. Steve Zabel, coach at Ohio State, he says, hey, I'm used to this offense, it's just like Michigan offense. Third down at two, seventh play of the Mountaineer drive. Blitz from the corner, and it paid off. Joe Kamara came from the corner and made the tackle. Darren Studd still knew he had a blitz coming from the corner. Joe Camaro, number five, up to the top right here, is coming from the corner. Studd still knew he had it. He handed it off. I know he wanted to get out of the play. You wonder if he had an audible to get out of, too, because he was very unhappy after the handoff. So another good-looking drive will end in a punting situation for Sauerbrunn. And Keith Miller is back at the 10-yard line this time for the Eagles of Boston College. Do you think about faking a punt on fourth down and a long two? Nope. Miller with a fair catch. And again, we'll take it around the 12 or 13-yard line. With one minute, 21 seconds remaining in the first half. Still 3-0. Mountaineers. And coming up tonight, more hoops. College basketball triple header will start off with a tip-off classic. Jalen Rose and... The Fab Four, I guess, is what's left, huh? For Michigan, they take on Georgia Tech. The Yellow Jackets of Bobby Crimmins, number 13. Then later tonight, it's the NIT Championship. Kansas and UMass having pulled off the stunner over North Carolina. Then we take you to the Great Alaska Shootout semifinal. Glenn Robinson and Purdue taking on Weber State. That is following Sports Center. Three more college basketball games tonight on ESPN. Foley on first down. Loads it and goes long for Miller. He's wide open. He threw that ball 65 yards in the air, going off his left. You're going to see a receiver come this way, but then when he scrambles, fully scrambles, he breaks like he is on a scramble drill, something that's practiced all along. Receiver comes into the inside. When he sees the scramble, he breaks to the outside, throws it from his own five, and that ball lands on the 38-yard line. 51 yards later, first down, BC. Another completion this time to Anthony Comer. He's got it inside the 30. And Boston College, are they going to use one of their timeouts here? Clock still running. 53 seconds. Foley lining up his troops for a second down and about two. Throws outside. First down and out of bounds. And stopping the clock is Clarence Cannon at the 24-yard line. Boston College has all three timeouts remaining, and everybody might say, why not use a timeout? Often in a two-minute drill, I found that by calling a timeout, you're really giving the defense time to set up. You're more used to running a two-minute offense than the defense is. Take advantage of it. They have yet to use the timeout, as that one stopped the clock by getting out of bounds. Watch for Pete Mitchell now. Number 82, the favorite receiver. Of Glenn Foley, who's yelling to his wide receivers, an audible, and on first down, goes over the middle intended for Mitchell, double covered, incomplete. Yeah, football, football. And Mike Collins was back there defensively. In this situation, when you're throwing a short pass, you really don't care if it's double coverage or not. You see Collins, he knows he has help inside. Here comes the other defensive back. If that ball would have been thrown where it should have been thrown, down by his knees, that would have still been a completion. Second down and 10. Now Mitchell set up as a wide receiver in tight on the right side. Foley 
in and out of the hands of Keith Miller. That would have been a tough catch because he has Tommy Orr draped all over him. And it'll be third and ten. West Virginia is playing what a lot of us call a mic-free coverage. All of the defensive backs to the outside know they have help in the middle of the field. They play outside technique and force their receivers in. And what you have to do in that situation is send two guys across. The first guy takes the free safety out, and you throw to the second one. You're third and ten. You might as well be the best team in the Big East on third down, which Boston College is. And full lead of Miller. It's another first down on a third and long to the ten-yard line. Fourteen yards. And it is going to be first and goal for the Eagles of Boston College. 27 seconds left in the half. That last play, Brad, like I was talking, here's the free man, Charles Emanuel. Outside technique, outside technique. They send Mitchell inside. They cross underneath it. Two guys in the center of the field is what defeats that free coverage. You'll see Emanuel bright, uh, bite on the tight end. There's the open man. Outside technique. He thought he had help. He had none. And for Keith Miller, his sixth catch of the day is set up the Eagles. First and goal at the nine. Trailing 3 0. Foley waits, and he's intercepted. Matt Tafani, the linebacker. The third turnover suffered by Boston College and Foley's second interception of the afternoon. I'm sure Foley would love to have this throw back because that's a throw that we all know is very dangerous. Throwing the ball late near the goal line when you see a secondary receiver. You see Campbell fell down, and that was an easy pickup. But, as you said, he waits and he held the ball. That's what caused the interception. He needed to throw that ball quickly over the middle. So an interception basically at about the two-yard line there, one in the end zone and a fumble at the three-yard line. So inside the 10-yard line, three turnovers suffered by Boston College. Jake Kelchner back at quarterback for West Virginia. And now they've just got 18 seconds. And they're going to try something anyway. They're going to try one deep. Into double coverage. Not quite intercepted as Joe Kamara made the grab and he was out of bounds. So now we've got... 11 seconds left in the half. Never like to throw those interceptions right before half. -time. They should have an, their own special stat, right? I, right? I, no, I always thought that you should bring in somebody else to throw those. <laughs> Designated intercept thrower at the end of the half, you know? Bring in your third-string quarterback to throw it long. And believe it or not, that's a first incompletion for Kelsner. And uh, it was just a prayer he threw up there. He's five out of six here in the first half. Walker falls down on a draw play. Had a little help to make sure he fell down from Ted Page. And that will bring the first half to a close. We expected some fireworks. This one's been up and down the field, but when you look at the scoreboard, pretty close to the vest is West Virginia with a perfect 10-0 mark, but only a field goal in the first two quarters. They do have the lead over the Boston College Eagles. A half remaining for the Mountaineers to try to go to 11 and 0. And waiting. And Florida State and Florida still have a date at the swamp tomorrow. So a lot can still shake down in college football this season. Right now, West Virginia with a three point lead. And Mike Logan from the 16 on the kick return. Flags down at the end of the play. And let's see if they got a face mask on Logan. As Mike got twisted around, Daryl Porter got down there, but may have gotten a hand in the face mask. Face mask, defense, five-yard penalty at the end of the run. There have not been a lot of penalties. Al Hines, our referee, gives us the call on this one. Inadvertent, grabs him, but then he kind of rips him on it right here. Those are the kind, Daryl Porter, number 44, is the guy who had him right there, turning him around. and. Those are the kind they usually give you 15 yards for. They're only going to walk off five against Porter. That's only the second penalty of the game. Boston College is the least penalized team in the Big East. And so Jake Kelchner and the Mountaineer offense set to work from the 25-yard line. Kelchner five out of six through a long ball at the end of the half, just hoping to get an interference call. Otherwise, he's hit all his passes. Here comes a blitz. Kelchner... Incomplete. And nice coverage by Michael Reed, who almost got to Ed Hill a little bit too early. Here's the poll we talked about. 
Tom Osborne, our congratulations to the Cornhuskers. Unbeaten regular season, beating Oklahoma today. Florida State tomorrow against the Gators. West Virginia here leading, but by only three. Auburn season and Notre Dame season are over. And Gary, if you want to move up and hurdle past Florida State if you're West Virginia, you don't do it by leading three to nothing. Well, the good news is you won, but unfortunately you're going to have to impress some people with the win, and you're going to have to win big, I think, for this football game. Second and ten. Kelchner stays in and goes deep. Almost picked off by Joe Kamara. Pass intended for Mike Baker. Kelchner took a shot to the hand as he let go of that one. Stephen Boyd was one of the guys coming inside. They are putting pressure with running blitzes inside, trying to stop the West Virginia running game. Steve Zabel said, no matter what we have to do, seven, eight, nine men at the line of scrimmage, we're going to take the running game away and try to force them to throw the ball. Have we seen a draw play from West Virginia? It, they don't have time to run a draw play. <laughs> Third and ten. Successful only once in six previous third downs. Kelchner throws outside. Kamara almost had another one. It's the Joe Kamara show on this series. Three and out. Mountaineers. Sauerbrunn will kick it away. And Yana Watson will drop back deep for the Eagles. Boston College, a great punt blocking team. They haven't been able to get close to Sauerbrunn so far today. This is not one of his better efforts. Watson backs up from this. He maybe should have come up and made a play on that ball, but clears out, and it'll still be a good field position for Boston College as they'll work for about the 32-yard line. Let's check in with Dr. Jerry Punch. Doc? Thanks, gentlemen. At halftime, Mountaineer coach Don Nealon told his troops he's not very pleased with the enthusiasm, or really the lack of enthusiasm, both on the field and on the bench. And guys, we have got to get the running game going. Steve Dunlap, defensive coordinator, told me, so I don't know what we do. We bring three in a rush. We bring seven in a rush. We brought everybody but the bus driver, and we can't get the folding. We're going to do something in the second half to get some pressure on their quarterback. They Back have up there. one sack on Foley so far on the day. Whoa, there's a hit. That'll show a little enthusiasm. Wes Richardson just met Campbell. Helmet to helmet. Richardson, who had the big game against Miami last week. 11 tackles and a fumble recovery. Pass defense in the first half. They did bring it a lot and got only one sack to show for it. But a couple interceptions in there. And as Gary said, a great intercepting team. 19 on the season for the Mountaineer defense. Second down 11. They blitz again. And this time they're burned by Brett Gibbons. Gibbons, another tight end, goes for 15. You know, Charlene Hawks said they kind of reminded him of Jim McMahon. He does me also. He throws off balance a lot. He really doesn't even have to set his feet, and that's something that Jim McMahon did often when he was playing quarterback regularly. Watch Foley. He comes back. He feels the pressure. and just kind of throws flat-footed accurately, though. That's the key thing is he's just good, accurate thrower when he doesn't have to set up. Seven different receivers he's used again today. First down at the 46. <laughs> Darnell Campbell, three to the 49. And yeah, we'll go down to Charlene Hawk. Charlene? Brad, entering the locker room, uh, Coach Coughlin expressed complete confidence in his quarterback. He said, he'll be fine. I don't need to say anything to him. He'll be back. Now, entering this um, this game, Glenn Foley only had seven interceptions on 321 attempts. And two of those interceptions now up to nine in the first half in the end zone, something he's never done before. So Coach Coughlin knew that he could get back. He's thrown... 71 touchdown passes. That's tops in the BC list. Career touchdown throws. And he'll put it up a lot before this one's over, but not this time. Tim Brown and Wes Richardson on the blitz. And they do come up with the sack, second of the day. This is the 46 of the Bear Blitz. You have two people aligned over the tight end. Tim Brown and outside of him coming from the outside right. If the tight end drops and blocks one, the other guy comes and blitz. You see the busted assignment. Two people come from the outside. You can't pick both, both of them up. Out. That ball should have been thrown quickly to the outside. Foley didn't have much of a shot on it. Tim Brown, co-captain for the West Virginia team, has forced a third and 11. 
Michael Campbell in as the third wide receiver. 